Alrighty then, corn children, here it is. The answer to what do we do with zero divided by zero, the lesson on point discontinuities. When last we met, whoop, we were looking at vertical asymptotes, weren't we? Yeah, and we looked at this example and we factored the denominator and we said that there were two values that caused division by zero both the value of whoop, 3 and negative 2. When we filled in 3, we got not 0 over 0, vertical asymptote. Dun, da, da, da. However, at negative 2, we plugged in negative 2 and it made 0 over 0. And I left you hanging saying we would need to dig deeper and we would need to discuss point discontinuities. So here's the question. We know at negative 2 our graph is broken. It is discontinuous. But the question is how is it discontinuous? We know at negative 2 it's broken, but what happens near negative 2? Hmm. That sounds like a limit. So here's what we're going to do. You ready? I'm sure you are. All right. When we evaluate, we plugged in negative 2. And at negative 2, we got 0 over 0. So the question becomes, what do we get when we are near as we approach negative 2? Now again, we tried filling in negative 2 for the x's and got 0 over 0. Here's our process. In order to evaluate this limit, even though the function is undefined, the limit might exist. We will factor, cancel, and plug back in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's give it a whirl. All right, here we go. We have already attempted direct substitution. We will now factor both the numerator and the denominator. We know from the previous lesson the denominator factors like so. We factor the numerator, factors of 3x squared, 3x and x. Factors of negative 2, 1 and 2, one of each sign, just need to get them in the right place. It's going to be the positive 2 here and the negative 1 there. Double check, but this is what we get. <gasps> Do you see what I see, shepherd boy? After we factored the x plus 2's, whoosh, whoosh, cancel. Oh, now here comes the plug back in. Plug back in what for where? We're going to plug negative 2 back into the problem. When we plug negative 2, back in, I got negative 7 over negative 5, which turns out to be 1.2. 1.2, a real number. This needs to mean something. Notice it is no longer zero in the denominator for the limit. We got 1.2. Alright, so here's what this means. There will be a point discontinuity at negative 2 is what the x was approaching and the answers to limits are y coordinates. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a hole in the graph. There is a single point that has been removed. Huh. Let's take some notes. Wait for it. Here we go. If we attempt to fill in a number directly substituting in and we get 0 over 0, we will then factor cancel, plug back in to evaluate the limit. The function is undefined, but the limit exists. If the function is undefined, 
but the limit exists, then there's a point discontinuity and the coordinates of the point discontinuity are C comma L. Graphically speaking, the graph has a point missing. The function is undefined, but the limit values are approaching it. Huh, that's crazy. I know, I know. So let's go back to our example. In our example here, from previous lessons, we know that if we fill 3 into this function, we get not 0 over 0. Plugging 3 in for the x gives us a vertical asymptote. If we take the limit as x approaches infinity, go back to the video on limits at infinity, we have a horizontal asymptote at 3. And if we fill in negative 2 into the function for x, we got 0 over 0. We factored, we canceled, we plugged back in, and the limit had an answer. These three facts allow me to sketch our curve. Vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. And a hole in the graph at negative 2, 1.2. You should verify all of this information with your graph and calculator by typing this into your y equals, doing the appropriate tracing, and look at the graph. I know, that's a lot to take in. Perhaps you should watch the video again.